dolphins. Today we're gonna do some beach camping, right? Mm -hmm. First time we've ever taken a RV out on the beach. The day, unfortunately, that we have to go out and do beach camping is rainy. rainy and miserable. But uh, we're gonna go do it anyways. Now, we've already gone out and checked out the beach beforehand. We did a boondockers welcome about 30 miles from here. We didn't just wanna pull out with our rig and get stuck or do something we weren't supposed to be doing. at the moment kind of looking for a place for us to park uh, we did run, run into the local constable here which gave us a piece of paper yeah, with a bunch of rules. the rules and regulations here which just uh, good time camping gave us a little bit of information about the area which was really cool actually we've gotten less than that at most campgrounds that we've yeah. gone to so we're here we're gonna try to get parked and set up tomorrow's just be a better day and cleared up This has been surreal for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have yeah. you enjoyed it? Yep. What's what's your favorite part of being out here on the beach? Playing in the water. Playing in the water? And playing in the sand. And playing in the sand? Yeah. So, <clears throat> some of the things that I've learned for being the first time camping on a beach, some of the things probably be a good idea for you to know if you're gonna be coming here uh, number one is uh, you can only stay for 14 days which that's nice and you can leave and come back again um, but it has to be after a 30-day period and you can only stay a total of 60 days on the beach this beach for the year now the beautiful part about Texas is there's beaches all down the side so you can essentially stay the whole year if you just went from beach to beach to beach. First and day. they're the best 14 days in my life. It, it, uh, listen, it's been serene. The stars that we've seen out here yeah. at night, the, the skies, the, the the atmosphere, the sound. Now, not to nitpick, the, there's one thing that could only, only one thing that could make this better. If you look at the waves, they're the real short waves. The way and it the wasn't cold. Coming in. It's not really cold right now, though. You were in a jacket, no, but no I'm, I mean, he no shorts and and everything. The water, you know, I'm not going in.
number two, second thing, is there are there is a section of the beach that you have to have a permit for. Now the permit's not a big deal. It's it's twelve dollars for a year for the permit, uh, and it is down that way. And on the stuff that I'm gonna be listing on our website, I'm gonna put the location, but you can find it on Google Maps pretty easy. It'll be the one marked free beach camping. It's, it's pretty much where it goes from the city line to the county line out here. But this section of beach, there's no need for a permit, no nothing. You still have to follow the rules, but there's no need for a permit at all out here. So you have to be careful where you park. What I would do is just suggest going further north and usually when you get up to the area where there's there's no houses, no beachfront or anything behind, uh, I'm sorry, there's beachfront but there's no houses, there's just dunes and, and it goes straight to the water, you should be okay. This. This is how you uh, save picnic at the beach. Instead, so we got a grumpy old man. We got that grumpy old man. <laughs> <laughs> we got that grumpy old man. <laughs> Lesson number three, three, if you're following along, be prepared with your rig. Just like any kind of boondocking situation. You know, naturally, I don't know if you can see it over there. We brought excess water out with us, but, you know, be prepared to get stuck if you need to. We put blocks under our tires. We have reset our trailer a couple of times because you're gonna sink in a little bit. One thing I do wanna point out while I'm at it, I'm gonna do a video on these things, are these Anderson leveler blocks. These are made for the round plates in the front of the fifth wheel. I was a little worried about these when we got them, but we've had them now, what, six months? We've used them on concrete, we've used them on grass, we've used them on wet grass, we've used them on wet ground, we've used them on gravel, gravel. we've used it on the sand. beach, sand. And, and look, yes, they, they sunk in. Things are going to sink in here. Yeah, it is important our bedroom too. So. You calling us heavy? <laughs> yes. So, you yeah. mostly. Have a good plan for blocking yourself. So number four, while I'm here, standing here talking about it, to, to kind of give you the lay of land. We came out here a day beforehand and we checked the area out because it was gonna be a rainy day and we came out. We didn't know where the tides were, everything else. If you have the opportunity to do that, I suggest you do it because the stuff changes all the time. However, what seems to be the common thing here, and this will change. If you look behind me, you can see pretty much where the road is. This is, this is like a road pretty much on its own. Cars go up and down here all day long. So be careful, if you got little ones, you don't want to run around out here. Make sure you watch them. But the water rarely ever makes it up to this seaweed line that we've got out here when the tide comes in. You can see it. Now I have, I get, it has come up to this point, but majority of the time it stops somewhere right over here. Now tides change, so you, like I said, you have to pay attention to it. But as long as you drive down this roadside here, don't park on the road, because that is a very trafficked road. Not too much at night, but during the day. You park on that side, you're plenty of far enough away from anything happening. As you can see, you're distance from everybody. Uh, in fact, we that's the closest neighbor we've had in a while. Uh, normally they're much further away. Now night here, sound doesn't travel at all. Lesson number five. Five? Hopefully I'm at the right number. Pre prepare. You're gonna have sand everywhere. Sand everywhere. everywhere. Literally everywhere. You, you, you know when you go to the beach, beach for the beach day and you come home and you take a shower and the next day you take another shower you still find sand in places it shouldn't be yes that's that's what that's this that's one. what this scenario is right here because if you don't drag it in now we, we put our carpet and all that stuff out but if you don't drag it in with your feet and everything else everywhere. the wind blowing it gets it everywhere 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 i was sweeping prepared. cleaning i i have the strongest feeling that we are going to be cleaning Sam for a while. Months probably to come. But, you know, don't forget that this is also salt and spraying through the air too. So when we leave here, we're gonna give a, a thorough cleaning of the trailer. 
maybe not the best idea for you to take your brand new rig and come out here and do it if you want to keep it pretty for a while. I mean, it's gonna be pretty, it's <laughs> fine, but I'm doing it again. In fact, we want to make this a yearly thing. This yeah. is this is uh, this be a tradition, surreal though. for us. The next time we're coming though, we're doing the whole 14 days. Maybe going down a couple more beaches. Maybe a little bit in the summer so we can enjoy the beach. Honey, not very sandy here, is it? It's a daily routine here. What's all that, kid? Where'd they come from? Hey, honey. Is it still worth it? Yeah. Number six. If you uh, farther up that way, like 29 miles, it's a boardwalk. Galveston Beach Surfside has everything you could want. From entertainment to museums to grocery and some really delicious food. And a nice pier. And a nice pier. pier. There's a it's lot awesome. for you to do. It's not even 29 miles. It's actually less than that, but yeah. you know, it, it's a little bit of a drive, but heck, for here, it's, it's beautiful. It's all coastline, yeah, yeah. beautiful drive the whole oh. way. Uh, now, there is a bridge that connects between here and Galveston Island, which then eventually brings you up to Galveston, and as we learned, the locals call this water side, and then they call it the, the you know, inland side, but of Galveston. There's a $2 toll to, to bring you up there. Now, it doesn't matter how big your rig is, though. You could have 15 axles, it's still a $2 toll. As long as you're not over 10 feet wide, and you can make it through the toll. So, up there, tons of stuff to do. Food, gas, water, everything you need. You never even really have to leave the island. No. This, you have Golden Corral, you have Rainforest Cafe, you have Pizzeria. That's actually Baba Gump really Shrimp. Cool. Oh, there's Mahi Mahi. Mahi Mahi. Mahi Mahi very running good. around. Very good. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to eat. Oh man, the Italian pizza, the uh, Russo's, New York pizza. Oh my God, to die for. To it was, it was for. good, really good. Expensive. If you eat there, I suppose that eggplant roll. Yes. Oh, oh that God. was so good. That was so, that was good. so good. And they got the sauce they make it with these little... Uh, Ooh, it's delicious. It was delicious. delicious. Also, another thing you should do, if you're heading north or out here after this, is there's a ferry that takes off, and it's about 30 miles north from here where we're standing, that takes you to another island that you can get out. So you can avoid that Houston area. Yes. What's nice is it'll take rigs on this way, going up to 65 feet long, nothing over 80,000 pounds, and you can't be over 10 and a half feet wide. Um, on the other way, you can be up to 80 feet long and still all the same requirements. Another thing, on the way there, you can have uh, gas cans on the back of your truck. No, but on the way back, you can have two gas cans. Two. So it's really weird how they got that laid out. But you can't have gas cans going that way. But the best part about the ferry, it's free. It's free. And, uh, you know, it's free. You're going to see it. Free, free, free. Free, free. It's free. It, it's, 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 <laughs> Number seven, shells. If you like shells, you like searching for shells, there are plenty of them out here. Uh, great place to find shells. I could, and we found out by uh, another guy that we uh, met here. Uh, he gets up early in the morning and says he can find crystals. But you have to get them early in the morning, he says, and you can find them in through the water and stuff. So if you like searching for stuff and searching for crystals, it's a great place to do it. I like my beauty sleep, so I don't wake up at five in the morning to do it. sparklers and stuff yeah. for a kid thought he thought it would be awesome so yeah. Uh, yeah so you can do a lot of fun things in the beach that are not permitted or illegal to do nope you can do campfires you can do fireworks and camp out there
I'm dying. Okay, pause for a second so we can talk about how incredibly lucky we are and incredibly stupid. We almost got the RV on fire. As you can see from this picture here, we didn't even know what was going on while it was happening because it all happened within seconds. Now, on this first picture here, you can see we're looking up at the sky and there's fireworks <laughs> going everywhere. On the next pictures here, we're going to take you frame by frame here because it's so hard to see. Little pieces of debris, explosive debris, might I add, were not only bouncing off of me, but they were also inches away from going into open windows that we had in the trailer, if you can see up here on the side of the picture. So those pieces of debris could have easily flown into the trailer and created a very fiery situation, which would have ruined a beautiful camping trip for us. So I went in and made sure there was no damage or a fire started inside. But that's one thing that we want to point out in this video, which is lesson number eight. Make sure you have a fire extinguisher in your trailer for any situation, not just beach camping. But more importantly, if you don't have a fire extinguisher, get one and know where it is at all times. We keep ours right by the door, which luckily for us came with the trailer. But we also keep excess ones stationed throughout our trailer and our truck to make sure that in any situation we can react, respond and take care of the situation as needed. Now, one of the other things, too, is if you do have a fire extinguisher, once you go check it now, make sure it's not expired and that it's still full. Because when you need it, you need it. And you never know how quick these things happen. All right, guys, we have a storm rolling in tomorrow. We're going to get prepared for that. We'll see you in the morning.
why I said that we should be more than a couple. I know a vow is not enough. So kiss me again and again and again the way it should be. You see. That's why I said that we what? should be more than a couple of hours is not Oh, so Mama has a little bit of seasickness. Boats don't do too good. Again and again, the way it should be, you see, we're more